do a quick talk on formal definition of a limit. And you can see the definition here. And I just want to explain what it means, and then I'll do a couple of examples. But uh, if you can recall from uh, AP Calc 1, we talked very generally about what, what a limit was. And it was a number that was being approached from both sides. So obviously that is the limit, L at the x value of A. But we want to formalize that a little bit. So what the formal de definition of a limit concerns is the idea that I can get infinitesimally close to the limit. Let's say epsilon away. So I get very, very close from either direction. And to do that, I need to get delta away from the x value we're calling A in this picture. So you can see that stated up here that you know the limit is L. Okay, there it is. There's the limit. Then to get epsilon units away from L, we need to get delta units away from A. Okay, one more time, you kind of look at the picture. If I want to get epsilon units away from L, I need to get delta units away from A, essentially telling you that you can get infinitesimally close to the limit by just getting infinitesimally close to the x value of choice. So let's do an example. The limit as x approaches 2 of 4x plus 1 is 9. Now, of course, we already know that, and that's very easily done. All we'd have to do is substitute 2 in, 4 times 2 plus 1 is 9. But you can see I've given you an epsilon. And basically what I'm saying is I want to be within 0 0.01 of that value. Okay. So really I want to be between 8.99 and 9.01. Right? One one-hundredth from the limit. So essentially I've got to find the x values that will help me achieve a y value one-hundredth away from the limit. Now let me do that, and then I'll explain why this proves that the limit exists in just a minute. But going back to the formal definition, what we're aiming for is to say that x minus 2, and remember that 2 just comes from right here, saying we're approaching 2. This has got to be less than a delta. Along with that, we know that our function, 4x plus 1, has to be epsilon, or 0 0.01, away from 9. So we want to figure out how close you have to be to 2. And that really is the point here. How close do you have to be to 2 in the x direction to be within 1 hundredth in the y direction, the function minus the limit? Well, I kind of just ignore that x statement to begin with. I'm just going to kind of work right down here. I'm going to simplify this and say it's 4x, let's see, plus 1, so it's minus 8. Okay. Now, of course, with absolute value, I'm going to just say negative 0 0.01. Okay. I'm going to add 8 to both sides, 8.01, 7.99, I'm going to divide both sides by 4, like that. And when you do that, this side comes out to be 1.9975. Zero two five. Now, we can go back up here to figure out what delta is. Because we can plug those in. We can say, well, 1.9975 minus 2 is negative 0 0.0025, uh, but absolute value, so we have 0 0.0025. It's less than delta. So here's what we did. We just showed that the difference between the function and the limit is less than the epsilon given, 
as long as the X is between 1.9975 and 2.0025, which, since we're approaching 2, it needed to be 0 0.0025 away from 2. That's how close it needed to be. Now, in a picture, let me just go back to that original picture and show you what I mean. Now, what I just did was I showed that, let's say, and obviously this isn't the same picture, but let's say the limit is 9, and to get within 1 hundredth of 9.01, .01, I needed to get between or within 0 .0025 of 2. Now, you say to yourself, well, how does that prove there's a limit? Well, the epsilon was arbitrary. I could have picked any epsilon I wanted. I just happened to pick 0 .01 but I could have picked point zero 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 one or point zero 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 one. So saying that epsilon is arbitrary, what we just showed is that, at least for the first case, when I pick an epsilon, I can find a delta that will get me within that epsilon of the limit. And remember, that's what a limit is. It says it approaches from both sides and gets really, really close, but doesn't necessarily need to touch. So that's what we show. Now, here's another example. And I'm going to do it the same exact way. I'm going to start by saying, okay, we want x minus 3 to be less than delta. So I'm going to go over here and say x squared, the function, minus the limit, has to be less than 0 0.05, the epsilon given. And again, I would just deal with the... With, uh, this side to begin with, there's no point in trying to do both at the same time. So let's uh, restate it without the absolute value. Add 9 to both sides. Take the square root of both sides. Oops. Rid of that. And so I've decided that x has to be with between 2.992 and 3.008 to get me within five one hundredths of the limit. Well, now I just go right back over here and I plug those in. So, you know, 2. 992, and it, chances are good they're going to come out really similar to each other. You you might want to check, uh, but this will come out to be 0 0.008, and we'll say that that is our delta, that we have to get within eight thousandths to get of the x value to get within five one hundredths of the y value. Now, now let me show you quickly how this can work for general, a general case, because now I'm just going to do for epsilon. So I'm going to start the same way, x minus 2 has to be less than delta, 4x plus 1, the function, minus the limit, less than, notice it's just epsilon. I'm going to do a little simplifying. Now, at this point, you could solve it exactly the same way. You could put it between a negative epsilon, positive epsilon, add 8, divide by 4, but I want you to look at how slick this is. I could pull a 4 out, be left with x minus 2. Take a look at this, x minus 2 is right here, x minus 2 is right here. And divide both sides by 4. So now I know x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 4. So that must mean that epsilon divided by 4 will give me my delta. And that is the proving of it. Now I've shown that, you know what, it doesn't matter what epsilon is, if I take epsilon and divide it by 4, I'm going to get, with, I'm going to get uh, the delta that will give me the limit. So this is the formal proof of a limit. It's not on the AP exam, but it's good to practice and know. And again, it's essentially just saying that if I pick 
if I know the limit or if I, if I want to prove that the limit in this case is 9, I say, well, if I want to get arbitrarily close to the limit, function minus the limit, arbitrarily close, name it epsilon, then how close do I need to be in the x direction? Well, it turns out if I take my given epsilon and divide it by 4, that'll tell me how close I had to be. So, you know, this is kind of a nice way to do it because that way if I said, oh, I, I want epsilon to be 1, well, then you say, okay, well, then delta has to be 1 fourth. So if you want to be within one unit in the y direction, you've got to be within 1 fourth in the x direction.